Okay, so I, I will tell you about the project that uh, we were doing with the chairman and with uh, Amy uh, McQuillan uh, about deriving the rotational periods, uh, stellar rotation uh, for uh, more than 34,000 uh, uh, stars in the Kepler data. Uh, but before I start, uh, I, I thought that uh, I would uh, uh, spend a few minutes of uh, pointing to an amazing paper in my mind that was written in 1952, I think, that connects the two themes of this conference, and this is uh, stellar rotation and exoplanet, which is, I think, not that that paper is not well known, and this is a paper written by Otto Struve in '52, and what he says is that uh, that uh, about that time it was realized that G stars don't rotate fast. This was done by some observations at Leak, I believe, that uh, measuring the V sine i, they realized that they that they rotate slowly. So what uh, Otto Struve says is that I have suggested elsewhere that the absence of rapid axial rotation in all normal solar type stars suggests that these stars have somehow converted the angular momentum of axial rotation into angular momentum of orbital motion of planets. Hence, there may be many objects of planet-like character in our galaxy. It's amazing. But nevertheless, I mean, he continues and he suggests how we can detect those planets. So first of all, he say, there's no reason why we would not have a planet with one day period. When, and, and I started searching for planets in, in 82 something, and I was, at that time, we could detect only planet short period planets. We had trouble getting uh, uh, time because people told us, well, you know, giant planets, they are only at, at uh, 5 AU and 12 years. So this is amazing. Uh, I thought that I had this idea, but you know, Otto Struve was much before me. And, and, and besides, uh, uh, he says a planet 10 times the mass of Jupiter would be very easy to detect. That's exactly what we detected at the beginning of uh, HD114. 762, so it, it is an amazing uh, paper. It's only two pages, and uh, I think it connects very nicely the two teams, uh, two teams of, this, uh, of this conference. Anyway, uh, following the, the big shoes of, of, of uh, Otto Struve, I will also try to connect the, the, two, the, two, um, the two issues, and I will show you after I will uh, uh, review the work we have done uh, uh, deriving the rotational periods of, of the stars, how this may be, be connected to exoplanets. So first of all, um, what, what we did is trying to, to derive the rotational period not by power spectrum, but by uh, autocorrelation. And uh, autocorrelation, for the people <laughs> who doesn't know uh, what it is, it means that uh, we take the data and we shift it, and for every shift we measure the correlation, and and so we we get uh, uh, a, auto -co a correlation as a function of the lag, and and in this case you can see that um, uh, although you could think that uh, the the rotational period of the star is is this uh, is the 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 spacing in time between these two, uh, which is five days, and another, another one. But when you take the autocorrelation, it turns out that, uh, no, this is 10 days, sorry. But this is not the real period. The real period is clearly the, the 20 days. And by the autocorrelation, you get that immediately. Well, that's kind of an easy uh, uh, um, example, but you can have such a thing that you don't see anything. Uh, by eye, but when you when you play the, the autocorrelation, you immediately see very nice uh, peaks. 
Um, and there is a lot of information in the autocorrelation function, including the length of time which takes the peaks to decay, which indicates the memory time scale of the system. So, so I, I, I really recommend, uh, I was preaching for that for 20 years, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that for, for, for stellar rotation where the phase changes and the, and the, the amplitude changes, that's, uh, so, so power spectrum is not the, it's not the natural tool to analyze because power spectrum uses sine function and sine function have this strange feature that they, ha they keep the phase all the time, constant, and they keep also the amplitude all the time. But your model, our model is not that. So why, why apply a mathematical tool that is so different from what we have in mind for the physical uh, phenomena? And, 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 and autocorrelation is really the, the natural thing to do. And uh, here are some, some simulations that we did and compare the, 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 the power spectrum to the, to the um, <coughs> autocorrelation. I won't go into all the details, but, but uh, this all show that in, in many, many cases, I, I should be careful, uh, um, the, 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 the autocorrelation has uh, better results than, 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 the, than the power spectrum. And here are examples, real examples from, from, from Kepler. This is one of them. When we compare, you can see when we compare the, the, the autocorrelation with the power spectrum, and, and we really get, get the right period here, but the power spectrum picks uh, the, the, the wrong period, we think, which is half the, the real period. And, and here is another one with, with, with a. With a uh, with a dip, with a transit, so, so it's, it's very clear. I mean, uh, the autocorrelation picks in many, many cases easily the, the, the rotation period, uh, even though it's not, not clear in, to, to when, you, when you look at the light curve. And, and I encourage you to, to, to look at uh, these very interesting uh, posters uh, that uh, talk, talk about the, 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 the technique and compare that to... to, to to power spectrum, uh, uh, which is very important. Anyway, so what we, that's what we did after a learning uh, curve and, uh, and uh, learning, uh, teaching our s automatic system how to do that. Uh, we considered uh, all the Kepler data. We removed uh, all kind of, uh, of, of, uh, of stars that we were afraid uh, will not give good results, and, and we were left with uh, uh, 133,000 uh, stars that we analyzed and we found uh, rotations that we tend to believe uh, are true for more than 34 uh, 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 thousand stars. Now, if you want to plot the periods that we found as a function of mass, this is a little bit tricky because uh, the mass is not coming with the data of Kepler, unfortunately. Uh, well, they have in the kick the temperature. For most of stars, it's OK. And we derive the masses from the Baraf uh, 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 model. Thank you, Isabel, for that. Uh, without that, we couldn't do that. And um, so this, this is the data. You can see the, the sun, our beloved, beloved star is here. And um, there, are, there are a few interesting uh, features here. A a and besides, uh, 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 there were other, other, two other uh, studies that used, I think, power spectrum and got similar results, I think. So uh, here is, is kind of uh, uh, slicing the, the sample into temperature, which is uh, uh, more to believe. Uh, because we don't need to rely on, 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 on models that can be complex uh, because of, of the kind of uh, some, sometimes uh, ambiguous. So you can see that the, that the period goes up as the temperatures go down. As usual, we plot the temperature in the reverse uh, uh, direction, and you can see that there is for, for, for the M stars, there is a kind of two population of periods. 
which is very clear here. And you can see also that the, the upper envelope goes up, but I think there is here a dip which is real. And uh, we don't claim we understand that, but just call the attention of the community for that. And now uh, I'll come to this, this figure here uh, uh, again. We, we also plotted the amplitude that we estimated as a function of temperature. Wow, five minutes. OK, so I have to hurry up. Uh, uh, so um, that, that's the amplitude as a function of, of, of temperature. OK, I have, I'll have to skip that. OK, so um, I will not talk about this, because this is uh, uh, Jennifer will talk uh, immediately after me uh, in, in fitting this, this data with, with, uh, with isochrons and, and get the ages. I, I, OK, so, so I, I would like in five minutes to talk about two papers that uh, one, one, one is published and one is, is, is uh, close to submission. And this is about uh, uh, one. The first one is that uh, we think, we think that, that uh, 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 if we plot now the periods we found for the KOIs, the stellar periods that we found for the KOIs, and we plot the rotational period of the star as a function of the orbit of the closest planet, we think that there is here a, a, a positive. It's um, two and a half, three sigma effect, so we think this is, this is real. Uh, and, and that means that, um, that uh, uh, short period uh, planets around fast rotators are rare. And, and in fact, there are already two explanations for that. Uh, but uh, I, I can uh, refer you to these this, uh, this, uh, uh, two papers. And, and, and both of them assume that, that the planet, the, the, that for, for those, those stars here, uh, uh, one planet was shifted into the star. The star swallowed the, 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 the closest planet. Anyway, I, I, I want to go to, the, to, the, to my last uh, point. Uh, and which I think it's, it's, it's uh, quite interesting, and, and I think it's, it's very significant statistically. So here you have the, 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 the amplitudes that we measured of the rotation as a function of temperature. Now, uh, in, in fact, the, the amplitude that we measure is not the real amplitude, because that depends on our line of sight, right? So if, if we, have a, we have an observer here, uh, you, you will see a, a, a large amplitude. But if, if, it, if it happened to be that the observer looks from here, then, of course, the, the amplitude of the modulation will be decreased. So suppose to, to uh, first uh, approximation that the amplitude is proportional to sine i, which i is now the inclination of the axis of rotation of the star relative to our line of sight. So then, on the average, you know, the median that we measure for a given temperature, right here, it's not the real one, but we have to, to, to increase that by a factor of 4 over pi. So how, how we, we can do that? Suppose, by miracle, we have a subsample of those stars that we know that we are looking for with a 90 degrees inclination. Inclination, I remind you, is the inclination of the, of the, of the stellar axis relative to our line of, line of sight. Well, nature prepared for us such a sample. This is the star of these planets, with transiting planets. If, 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 if there is no obliquity between the planet and the stellar rotation, then transiting planets means that we are looking for 90 degrees, uh, thank you, uh, 90 degrees uh, 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 angle with the stellar rotation. Because obviously there is 90 degrees, it's a transiting planet. So we are looking 90 degrees relative to the, the, uh, to the orbital uh, angular momentum of the, of the planet. But e if there is uh, no obliquity, so that, that's the sample. OK, so let's do that. Let's take out of this sample, subsample of all the KOIs, and calculate the amplitude or the median of the amplitude. Well, that's what we did. And lo and behold, the, the median of the KOI's amplitude is larger by about a factor of 4 over pi. 
wow, this is really something, you know? But I showed you only the cold stars. Let's see what happens to the hot stars. The hot stars are, the amplitude of the KOIs of the hot star is smaller than the single star. What's going on here? Well, the natural explanation is that for the hot stars, they are misaligned. So if we choose stars that have planets that transit, which means we are looking 90 degrees with, uh, to the axis of, of orbital motion, we have a, a preference against looking 90 degrees of the stellar rotation, which means that for the hot stars, uh, hot stars are misaligned. Well, just to show you that this is all oh, now, <laughs> that this is, this is significant, this, this is the cumulative distribution with the, the KS test, and we divided it between uh, uh, below, below our beloved sun temperature, below, below, below uh, uh, 6,000 uh, 6, and above 6,000, and you can see that the difference is huge. And, and the significance is, is, is 10 to the minus 6, or 10 to the minus 5. So I suggest maybe that uh, really hot star misaligned. And this reminds us of, of, a, of a plot that, that uh, we have seen uh, quite a few times in this, in, in this uh, conference, that, uh, that uh, when we move to hot stars, we get, we get uh, the, the obliquity all over. But we suggest that the trans transiting is at 6,000 degrees. And if you, if you look here carefully, you, you see that, that what happens in 6,000 degrees. So to summarize, uh, we did the autocorrelation uh, analysis of all the Kepler stars. Uh, we find, I think, that there is a, dress, uh, a paucity of closing planets around fast rotators. And we do, uh, we found that some evidence that, that hot stars uh, with planets are misaligned. Thank you very much. So I think we'll have to keep the discussion to one or two questions. Um, anyone? Okay, there's one question right at the back, and then that one. Boom. You're right here. Maybe I should stand up. Uh, yeah, it's hard to see. Ah, okay. um, have you made any checks for um, this alignment or misalignment for anything else than temperature? For example, single planet systems, multi-planet systems, longer periods or shorter periods? We tried all the other parameters that we could think of. We what don't about see it. We don't rotation see it. period? We, yeah, we tried. We didn't see you it. sure it's not a selection effect? Harder to find uh, planets sure, around hot stars. Sure, that is something planets. that I learned not to use this word in, in science, but uh, we think it's not. That was my question. All right, we can have one more question if it's different. No? Well, in that case, let's thank you again.